When night came, I quitted my retreat and wandered in the wood. And now, no longer restrained by the fear of discovery, I gave vent to my anguish in fearful howlings. I was like a wild beast that had broken the toils, destroying the objects that obstructed me and ranging through the wood with a stag-like swiftness. Oh, what a miserable night I passed. The cold stars shone in mockery, and the bare trees waved their branches above me. Now and then the sweet voice of a bird burst forth amidst the universal stillness. All save I were at rest or an enjoyment. I, like the archfiend, bore a hell within me, and finding myself unsympathized with, wished to tear up the trees, spread havoc and destruction around me, and then to have sat down and enjoyed the ruin. But this was a luxury of sensation that could not endure. I became fatigued with excess of bodily exertion and sank on the damp grass in the sick impotence of despair. There was none among the myriads of men that existed who would pity or assist me, and should I feel kindness toward my enemies? No. From that moment I declared everlasting war against the species, and more than all, against him who had formed me and sent me forth to this insupportable misery. Ah, uh, never mind, he's just been killed by a bat. Frank N. Stein is about as far removed from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein as you're ever likely to get. In the same vein as, well, most games from the era, if you were going to take a well-known franchise, you were going to turn it into a platform game, and there's certainly no deviation there. Released in 1984 by PSS, Frank N. Stein takes the gothic horror of Mary Shelley's tale and basically just ignores everything about it, which is fine. It uses the name, it uses the general conceit of a mad doctor collecting body parts to build a monster, but it never really steers itself into the horror elements. This is a Disney horror film. Even the cover for the game highlights quite clearly that this is a friendly atmosphere, not an oppressive one. Look how happy that dead person is. Look at his smile. Oh, what a... What a happy little corpse. You will also note that at the bottom of this cover it states Arcade Horror, and I honestly think that's just there because they had no other way to advertise the game. You can't really fit... It's based on a horror franchise, but it's not really horror. Also, it's sort of a platformer, but it's kind of not a platformer as well for Spectrum 48K. It's just a bit too long. It would be more accurate, though, because just as this horror game is not really a horror game, this platform game is also not really a platform game. It's a puzzle-based walking adventure with springs. You play as Dr. Frank N. Stein, and the goal of the game is to pick up all the body parts littered about the stage, avoid the myriad of mildly Halloween-themed enemies, and then bring the mutilated corpse back to life by hitting the switch at the top of the stage. The controls for doing this are as simple as they come, just left, right, and activate. There's no jump button there, you'll notice, and this is where the game's core deviates from the piles and piles of other games that typically push the platformer route. It's not about jumping over things, it's about avoiding things. Avoiding things, and a whole lot of waiting in one place so you can continue to avoid those things. On each level, there will be a set of springs, and the only way to move up a level is to stand on one and press the activate button. There are fireman poles as well, which let you slide down, but these don't come up half as often. It's all about springs here. Springs and dropping down from one platform to another are your two main options for traversing the verticality of each stage. There is fall damage. If you drop from too high, you'll break your neck and lose a life. And to be honest, I could never quite work out how high that was. It's usually pretty obvious and it doesn't come up that often, so it was never really a deal breaker, to be honest. This weird mechanic of focusing the game around avoidance means that the entire game plays more like a maze or a puzzle as opposed to a traditional spectrum platformer like Jet Set Willy. It's not necessarily about timing a leap, it's about timing your access to platforms so you don't get dead-ended by a flying syringe. To complicate this, the body parts that you have to pick up must be collected in a certain order. Head, then top left shoulder, then top right shoulder, then left hip, then right hip, then left leg, then right leg. I'm gonna be honest, I can understand why this restriction is in place, but there's a couple of reasons why it annoys me. 
One, on a purely thematic level, why on earth does Frankenstein's monster require his left foot before his right foot can be attached? I haven't read the book since I was in school, but I'm pretty sure it never mentioned Dr. Frankenstein's weird OCD about specifically putting the body back together in a certain order. It doesn't make any sense. Two, the level layouts are specifically designed to make you traverse them from left to right to left to right to back and forth, back and forth. The body parts you need and the order in which you have to collect them don't give you any choice in the way you combat a level. It is rigid in its design and it's specifically done this way. Now, point number two there isn't exactly a direct criticism. The game is literally designed to be played like this, and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing isn't really the point. For me, it got to the point where I started to roll my eyes when I'd made it all the way to one side level to collect a body part, knowing full well I'd have to go all the way back again, and then back again, and then probably back again. The levels always loop in this manner, and it's fine, but there's not any real deviation from that. It becomes a little tedious when you know exactly what you're in for as soon as a new level loads up. That being said, there is some variety here. Every second level you're treated to a randomised stage that is definitely not inspired by a certain ape and his barrel throwing antics. There's no body parts to pick up here, your objective is simply to make it to the top. However, with the randomised nature of these sections, it can either be a piece of piss or ridiculously difficult. It's just whatever the game makes of it. The biggest bugbear here is that using the springs pushes you slightly higher than you'd expect, and you can hit your head on something that's above the level you're trying to reach. The whole objective here is to make it to the top so that you can kill the monster, and then you go back to making another one. The whole game continues this creation and murder loop, and it's a bit odd. I mean, fool Dr. Frankenstein once, shame on you. Fool Dr. Frankenstein 13 or so times, the man's a fucking idiot. Frank N. Stein is, for the most part, a really nicely put together game, all being said. My only real issues with it started to come when I was about 10 levels in or so, and I realised to my own dismay that there was a time limit. A really, really strict time limit. And when I say strict, I mean it. Looking at the details on World of Spectrum, apparently it's impossible to beat level 25 without a poke to increase the time limit. It is unbearably tight, and it makes the process of completing these levels annoyingly rushed. In later stages, you need to know immediately which way you're going to go, where to wait, when to push forward, which platforms to head for. Because if you spend any time at all contemplating any of this, you're basically burning a life away. To make things worse, when you die, the entire level resets. Every body piece you picked up is back where it was before, and you have to do everything all over again. And in a game that focuses on doing things in a very specific and measured way, this doesn't really amount to something that keeps you consistently engaged. It adds an element of frustration to a game where you were probably quite enjoying it up to this point. By level 13, I'd gone from really quite enjoying myself to just being a bit annoyed. Enemy placements are designed to either catch you out for trying to rush the level, or placed in a way that you have to wait, and wait, and wait for the exact correct moment to step off a platform. And all the while you're waiting, that ticking clock is constantly at the back of your mind. Will I have enough time to finish this now? It's often hard to tell. There's no specific time given, you're just shown a meter which gives you a vague indication of how close you are to a cruel finish. Overall then, I like Frankenstein, I like what it does, it's cannily designed for the most part, with elements of gameplay that feel relatively fresh and interesting, and other parts that have already started to fall off the bone and decay. Remove the time element, or at least extend it to a fairly large degree, and soften the impact of death, and you'd likely have a game here that, for the type of game it is, it'd be hard to really improve upon. So, yes, that's it. Go and play Frank and Stein. It'll probably annoy you, but it'll only do it after a bit. And that's the mark of a game that's just good enough. Hooray!